Hi everyone, this is part two of my next top five tips for people moving over to the new OneNote. The next one is all about screen clipping. And so for example, if I wanted to further explain something and I had it maybe up in a textbook or on a website, I can capture that and then annotate it onto a OneNote page. So what I'm gonna do is bring up this image here. So I may be talking about the water cycle, but I may wanna type or write a note on the OneNote whilst I'm teaching. So. In good practice, I create a OneNote page in order to do this. I then click on this option here for screen clipping, and then it will kind of push my OneNote content out of the way and show me what else is on my screen. So here I can see kind of faintly the water cycle, and so I select over what it is that I want to capture onto the OneNote page, and then I release. Now it places that on, it reminds me that a screen clipping was taken, the date and time in which it was taken, but I now have something that I can either write on the side of, or I could set that as a background, and I can start to use something like my pens to provide further explanation for my students. The next one is quite a cool one actually, and it nearly had me convert from Windows 10 over to the old 2016 version just so I had the ability to do this, but it's all about creating page templates. So here is a standard template that I may like to use for my, my module for mathematics. It includes everything that I need, but it's empty, so it's just a template. So I always take this template and I fill it in. In this version of OneNote, you'll notice in the insert tool, this ability to provide page templates. And if I click down on that, it actually comes with some pre-prescribed versions from OneNote. So especially if you're wanting to template straight to a document size, these are particularly helpful. But what is most exciting is the ability to create your own. So right down the bottom, down in the bottom right hand corner, and I'm actually in the way, so let's just shift me over. There we go. Right down in the bottom right hand corner, here is this ability to save um, the current page as a template. So I'm gonna click down on that, and it's going to ask me for a name, so I'm gonna call this my, my maths template. And it, you do have this option where it asks you if you want to set as a default page for new pages in this current section. That's really up to you. It's only relevant if that section is always constantly using that template. I'm just going to leave that and click on save. And what you'll notice is at the top here is that this new little my templates section has appeared. And then when I click on that, if you didn't notice it, I'll click it again. So you can see here on the left in my columns is that it keeps appearing. So as I go through, these are all exactly the same. You're not seeing any changes on the screen because they're the same template each time. This next one is all about page versions, which you've always been able to access by switching over to the OneNote online version. But it's nice now that you can just stay here in the One application. So to do this, we just go to the History tab, and here you will notice this ability for page versions, and I'm going to click down on that. And you can see that this page has been edited multiple times over the last couple of years, which is probably just a natural progression of changes in curriculum and content or teaching to specific students. And so I can scroll back through here and see what was changed, and maybe we copy and paste or reinstate previous versions that are relevant to what I'm teaching. The next one is all about spelling, thesaurus, and the smart lookup function in this version of OneNote. So in the review tab, you'll now have access to a specific um, spell checker. You kind of will naturally have spelling coming up on the screen unless it's been disabled, but we can now come through and get more um, concrete spelling and grammar uh, proofing available in this version. You do also have access to a thesaurus in here as well, so I can look for alternative words. And the other one that we also have right next to it 
is this smart lookup function. And so it's going to provide you with a few things which don't require you to jump off to a different web browser to look. So this math sheet is all about fractions and I may want a picture, a new picture, for example. And so I can just work, write the word fractions. The more specific you are, the, the better the results you're going to get back. I have got some suggestions, some web suggestions here, but you can see that I've also got some media results as well that are coming through. I also get a the nice explanation there as well, showing me my nouns and origins of the word. All right, our next one is all about customization. And it's important to remember that if you do do any of this type of customization, it is only relevant to your instance of OneNote. So in a class notebook, this customization won't flow through to your students as well. But you may have noticed there's a couple of extra tabs along the top here compared to the Windows 10 version. And you can actually edit what's in these tabs and you can add your own tabs as well if you do um, specific types of tasks. So in order to do that, I'm gonna click here on files and go down to options. And the first thing you'll notice is that there's a lot more options in this version of OneNote than there is in the Windows 10. But we're gonna specifically focus on this customization ribbon here. And what you'll notice here is you have your main tabs. And so these shouldn't look unfamiliar. They're what we see up at the top left hand corner. Now you can either add your own new tab or you can add in um, an extra new grouping inside of that. And so what I'm gonna do is let's add in a new tab here and I'm going to call that tab um, printing because I tend to print my OneNote pages a lot. So I'm gonna click OK and then we can see here that we have this new group again that I can rename, I can give it a symbol, I might even use the little printer icon there, and I'm gonna call it print, and click OK. And then what I can do is I can look through all of these, these are the popular commands, um, you can sort by what you're looking for, but I'm going to look through to see if I can find the one that I want. And so there's a couple here, so this one here, I'm going to add it in, the ability to just click and print. And I might even add in the print preview option as well. So those two have been added and I'm gonna click OK. Now what happened at the top of my screen is next to view was printing was added. And so now when I click that, I can see I have this ability to print and I have this ability to print preview. So when I click on the print preview, I see what the page is going to look like, particularly good when you're trying to um, keep things within margins of, of pages or I do just have that opportunity to just print straight away.